He's showing us a contrast between two stark choices, between Christ and Satan. Now remember, Jesus, that's what his ministry was. He was always calling people to choose. Well, let's just walk through this chapter and see how God, who has always offered humans a way out of their sin, here again does the same. And as we see by the time we get to verse 20 and 21, humans still refuse. Even when God gives them literally a taste of hell. What we're going to see as we track through this is that God freezes, he kind of puts on pause, death. Now remember, he's in charge of death. No one dies a moment before or a moment after. God wants them. They have appointments. We all have appointments with death. You can't escape it. You can't uh, speed it up, and you can't hold it off, you know, by a few more, you know, carrot juices. No. It, it, it's appointed unto us to die. But for five months, God freezes death, and he puts it on pause just before over in the Middle East, where all the other problems are, gushing up like a volcano by the Euphrates River, becomes this furnace of smoke, and it just gushes so much that it makes the whole world darken and and be coughing from this sulfur-laden smoke. And as everybody has got their, you know, their iPhone 5CS or whatever we're on, tuned in, they're watching the smoke, and out of the smoke come locusts, but they're like horses. Now that is going to be a sight for the world to see. And they start causing stings like scorpions. Have you ever seen someone stung by a scorpion? They convulse, they writhe, and they act much like most of the demonized people that were thrown at Christ's feet acted writhing, throwing themselves into the fire, throwing themselves in the water. Why? They wanted to kill themselves. They were in such torment. The whole world starts convulsing and writhing as demons sting them. And you know what's happening? The whole world gets a taste of hell. God lets the the occupants of hell out. He lets the smoke and the fiery furnace of hell out. He lets the creatures that are most associated with hell loose and he doesn't let anybody die for five months no suicides no i mean everybody's cancer is abated for five months no one dies why i mean why would god i mean why would he torture people for five months inflict hurt on them because he's saying this is going to be over in five months that's never over you understand that's a stark contrast that's a god who is a savior saying, will you repent before that? I'm giving you a taste, a sampler of hell. And the majority of the people won't. They start worshiping the very things that are inflicting their pain, the demons. They worship the demons, not the creator. Okay, let's walk through the chapter or we'll never go home. Uh, Number one, we're going to learn lessons from the demons' locations. Where are they? Where is this pit? Uh, how does God launch them? I just told you about this, this fountain. And by the way, don't get you know, any tremors trying to write this down. We're going to be here a long time. Okay, this is quite a big chapter. What do they look like? Why does God describe them with all those like, 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 likes? Did you notice that? Who is their leader? Who is this, this powerful destroyer? You know, I look, there's a video game online. It's called something like War craft or something because I was studying uh, Apollyon and the Destroyer and he's a character in that movie. You know what? He's going to come out and people are going to try and hit the off button and he doesn't go off. He's real. And it's interesting who he is and the terrifying power they have to convulse people and inflict horrible pain and then death. People will cry. They think death is a cessation. Death is just the beginning of the pain. And then the chapter ends with the most sobering part. Sin is so powerful in its hardening ability to our souls, deadening to our spirits, 
that people that see God himself with his arms out sending angels, 144,000 witnesses, two witnesses, and, and all these disasters, and he's standing up there over the cloud of smoke with his arms out saying, you don't have to go there. Come to me, come to me. The water of life's free. Come to me. People refuse and say, I'd rather be in that pit than in your arms. That's amazing. 